let's do some practicing with basic variables, data types, and math operators. So for this first example, we'll, we're going to need to include the IOStream library, which is how we get our cout and cn commands. cout is for console output, cn is for console input. And then we can write using namespace std, that stands for standard. So anything included here, a lot of the libraries we use are part of the C++ standard library, so we say that we're using the standard namespace. Um, if we didn't have this, then anytime we used cout or cn, we'd have to do std cout, std cn. So with this here, we can just do cout and cn, it just makes it shorter for us, and we can go over namespaces another time. So I've started also with the basic program, int main, and return zero. So return zero is where the program ends. Um, return zero is just kind of an old style of saying return zero, nothing bad happens. No error codes. Not error code one or a hundred or one five two four or whatever. Um, so for this one, first we're just going to enter in um, a series of grades where we have something like A is 4, B is 3, C is 2, D is 1, and F is 0, so kind of your standard grade point average, at least here. So we'll do float, let's say grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4. So we're just going to have four grades in here. Um, then we're going to also calculate the grade point average after we get all of those grades, so we'll have to do an average which requires adding and then dividing, so we'll get a little bit of practice with the math operators. Um, so first, we'll, we can either ask the user what to enter for these grades or we can hard code some data. So at first we'll just practice with hard coding data. That's just when we say in this program grade 1 is going to be 4, grade 2 is going to be 3, grade 3 is going to be 4, grade 4 is going to be 2. We just hard coded it instead of letting the user decide. This can be useful for testing things out, um, so that's just why we're going to do it for now. And then we'll come back after we've kind of written the functionality and add user input to it. So calculating the GPA and the average is going to be um, adding all of your grades and dividing by the amount of grades that are there. So we have four grades, we're going to add all these and divide by four. So GPA is equal to grade one plus grade two plus grade three plus grade four divided by four. So this is an assignment statement and these are assignment statements. Just as a note, with these assignment statements, the variable you're storing data in goes on the left side. Then we have the equal sign and then the data on the right side, the data we want to store. In this case, this is just a, a math equation and that gets whatever this whole thing evaluates to will be stored in GPA. I'm also using parentheses just to set the order of operations because if I didn't do this, it would do grade 4 divided by 4 and then add the rest of these. So I want these to be added first and then divided by 4. And then we'll do a cout statement, your GPA is, and we can output the GPA and an ends line. So this goes to the end of the line. If we wanted to say more data, we could say good work. I just end up writing that at the end usually anyway. So with C out, you can use this output stream operator. Notice that it's pointing towards the C out. We can link up string literals. A string literal is anything within the double quotes here. Basically we've hard coded some text to be in our program. We can also continue using the stream operator and adding some variable here and this will output whatever this is storing. It's not going to display the text GPA in lowercase, it's going to display whatever number this is currently storing. So if I build this, we don't have any build errors, and I can run. 
So usually while I'm programming, I'll just build every so often just to make sure I don't have any build, uh, syntax errors. And then we can run. And then it will display the program. Your GPA is 3.25. Good work. OK, so now we can come back and add some user input. So I'm just going to say uh, GPA calculation program, kind of as the program header. And we'll have them enter their grade. So please enter grade 1, 0 to 4. I like to just say, hey, it should be between 0 and 4, just as, because if I were a user coming to this program not having written it, I wouldn't know what exactly. I'd try to type in an A, probably, and then that would crash the program, or it wouldn't like that because it doesn't want an A. It wants these number values. So then I'll do C in for grade one. Now we don't need this. So we're doing console input from the keyboard into the grade one variable. Notice that this stream operator is going to grade one. It's pointing away from C in into the variable. This one is kind of like it's taking this string and it's streaming it out to the C out. So we can do this for each of these. I'm just going to copy and paste, though keep in mind when you do copy and paste, you can easily get a copy paste error. So if I had only updated the numbers here but forgot to do them here, that would give me a logic error. So I'm going to just replace these. And we can get rid of the hard-coded data. Now another thing to note, let's say that I didn't have any C out statements here and just the C in statements. If I ran this, it would look like this. I wouldn't know that it's sitting here waiting for me to input anything because, I mean, as a user, not the programmer, I, I just wouldn't know. I'd see this, I would think that the program crashed, even though, yes, it will take inputs and do its job. So it's important to have C out statements before you get input so that the user can tell that something is expected of them. So then we can enter all of these and then get our calculation at the end. And every time we run it, it'll be a different um, value based on what I entered. And I accidentally ran in debug mode there. So there we go. That's our GPA program. We're doing some basic adding and dividing. We could do subtraction and do like grade one versus grade four, or multiply things together if we had to for some reason. Those are just going to be the minus sign for subtraction and the asterisk sign for multiplication. So, but we aren't going to use those here. Okay, now let's look at this Mad Lib story. I've already written some of this out. Now note that I'm using the include string. That's because we're using a string data type. Um, well, we haven't, aren't using it currently, but we will be in a moment. So a string is just some text. We can kind of store any sort of text in it, or if we were hard coding it, we would use the double quotes. All right, so I've written kind of a simple story, but we're going to replace these with variables. So we'll need some different things. So for example, job, we can ask, we can just go ahead and ask the user, enter a job, CN job. Also, I'd like to put a program header, so we'll do that here. Now, sometimes I get asked why I don't have an inline here. So at the moment, if I run this, it'll have whatever I type on the same line. Uh, if I put an end line here, it'll type whatever I have on the uh, next line. So that's just my personal preference. When I'm entering data in the console, I like to see my data on the same line here. Overall, it's not very important. I just think it's more readable. Okay, so I've entered a string job. I can now replace this job with our variable job. And so we can run this and let's say plumber. There was once a plumber named name. So we can continue adding. We'll need a name. 
enter a name. So then we can replace any player that says name with the variable name. I'm just going to copy this whole bit, and whenever I see name, I'm going to replace it. Now, it's really important to... Okay, this part we don't need here, because it starts with the name. It's important to remember that you'll have this string is opening and then closing, so the string needs to close. Then you have the stream operator, variable, another stream operator, basically linking these things together. Here's beginning and ending of a string. So if something is like not coloring correctly, you might have forgotten a quote, double quote somewhere or a stream operator somewhere. So this, depending on what your IDE looks like, this should not be the color of the text here. It should be its own color for, it's a, a variable name. So let's see, well, we have name here and name here. Okay, let's do float. So float money, enter a dollar amount. Dollar, uh, let's say, let's say a money amount, dollars dot cents, no dollar sign. Because if they entered a dollar sign, that wouldn't work. I've already hard coded a dollar sign here, but a float is just expecting numbers, or numbers with decimal points, um, or whole numbers, or something like that. No, uh, no extra symbols. So we can do that. Over here, I'll replace that with money. And now this line is getting a bit long, but I can separate these lines. It's okay to separate C++ statements on multiple lines, depending, like, if it makes it more readable, that's okay. So, we also need a noun, something that they want to buy. So let's say string noun, enter a noun. So over here, noun. And down here I have noun. Okay. Now I didn't specify a specific pronoun for this character, so we'll ask string pronoun. I think we only need it in one form. So for enter, for example, let me look at how these. So af uh, let's say he went home, she went home, they went home. So enter pronoun he, she, they form. Um, and I think that's all we need. He brought it home, she brought it home. Uh, he took on a second job, she took it. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do in C in pronoun and then we can output pronoun um, in each of these spots. And of course, this beginning area, I don't need a string to start because it's the first word in there. Um, okay, now we need a second job, a second money amount, and an integer. So up here, we need um, enter another job. So string job two, cn job two. Now I do have a note about these strings. Um, when we're doing a cn like this, we're only going to be able to enter one word at a time. So any sort of jobs that have a space in the title, like software space developer, won't be able to input be inputted this way here. It would only take the software part and stop at the space. There is a way to get a whole line of text, including a space, but we'll go over that another time. I don't want to overcomplicate this. So for now, let's add a note that it's one word. Oops. Uh, basically, no space is allowed. Same for the name, uh, just one name with no spaces. And, you know, once we get a little bit further, we can talk about how to get a whole line of text so we can make these a little bit more robust. Okay. We need amount of days. So enter an integer. Boop -ba doo We'll put it here. Um, so here's the variable, and here's some text that says days. Like, for example, if they enter 10, it'll say after 10, days, and then finally, money too. Enter another 
money amount. We'll replace that here. Oh, we also need a verb. So, last one. Verb. Enter a verb. I believe this should be past tense. Ends with ed, generally. Verb. Okay, so I think that is all of the ones that I was going to sub out. Going to build and run. So let's say plumber Bobbert 9.99 plunger. Uh, let's say they. Um, what's another job? I don't know. Uh, teacher a hundred. <laughs> uh, 14.99 exploded. Okay, so then we get a story. There was once a plumber named Bobbert. Bobbert had exactly $9.99, $9.99. Bobbert said, there's no way I could afford a plunger with this. So they took on a second job as a teacher in order to earn more. After a hundred days, Bobbert saved up $14.99. They went and bought the plunger, but it exploded as soon as they brought it home. Well darn, Bobbert said. The end. <laughs> so that's a little bit of how to use strings and how to use floats over here and do some basic math. Um, hopefully that was helpful and I have the source code up in the repository.